Here's a close-up of the two adorable dogs. So you can have fun. You can either use the same colored yarn hair for the dog, or you can have fun with different colors like blue or your favorite color. I think it turned out really good with the different color. This is my favorite one. After I finished making her, because of the snowflake on the ribbon and the colors I chose, I decided to name her Elsa. And the cute brown one I named Gidget. So the thing about these dogs is the hair is key. So if you put a little bit of hair, it looks too scraggly. So you have to put a lot of hair for it to look nice. And after putting all of the hair, I think they both look just too adorable. And I used a brush to help brush the hair. So yes, a brush will actually work on the yarn. And this is the style of brush that I used with the tips on top and the wide spaces. And this is what they look like on the other side, on the back. I also chose some really beautiful eyes for them. They're hand-painted eyes, safety doll eyes, and they look really pretty. I also use safety dog noses, and one of them is actually a heart-shaped nose. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.5 millimeter crochet foot hook as well as a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. You'll need an 18 millimeter safety dog nose. I'm using this adorable little heart shaped one and it comes with a plastic backing. And then you'll also need 15 millimeter safety doll eyes. These have a really beautiful painted wreath around them, a green color. And I have metal backings for that one. The yarn that I chose is a Bernat baby soft white sport colored yarn to my leftover yarn and then I also chose a couple brown colors this is a Karen one pound tan color and also a lighter brown color this one actually might be a red heart too any medium four sized yarn would work well for this project you're also going to need a black yarn, so any medium four style black yarn for the mouth. Now you can have fun with the color of yarn that you want for the hair. If you like the color that I used, I used Cap Crafter's Secret, and the color is turquoise, and it's just a medium four style of yarn, so any medium four style yarn would work for, at the same way if you can't find the Crafter's Secret. So we're going to start with the snout, and I'm starting with my white colored yarn. And the first thing you're going to do is just fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right to the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to um, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and stitch that knot down, cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one. Two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15, and then come back. After you finish a chain of 15, we're going to make the first row. So to, for the first row, you're going to count back two from the hook. One, two. Go into that hook, that, um, ugh, that chain with your crochet hook, bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going into the next stitch and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across, and then come back. Now to move up to the next row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into every stitch back across and you're going to repeat this for a total of four rows of a stitch count of 14 so this is the first row that we're making and you need three more after that you just chain one, turn your work and make a single crochet in every stitch and again you need four of those rows so this is how your work should look so far, and I just finished the fourth row with a stitch count of 14. Now we're not going to chain one, and you're just going to turn your work, 
and then go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet and then make one single crochet into every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 13. Now again you're going to turn your work then crochet into the next stitch, make a single crochet and make one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 12. So now you should have a stitch count of 12. Now we're going to maintain the stitch count of 12 for two rows. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch. That chain one counts as the first stitch for this row. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should have a stitch count of 12. Still. So now you're going to move up to the next row. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and then make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this row, you should still have a stitch count of 12. So this is how your work should look now. And now we're going to start crocheting in rounds. So we're going to start with working down the side of the snout. So you're going to chain one. And then you're just going to evenly space one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the first corner to turn towards the bottom. So just keep crocheting one single crochet evenly spaced down the side of the snout. I'll go ahead and work this with you. So you can see how I'm just spacing, evenly spacing the single crochet stitches down the side of the snout. Now in the stitch right before the end, you're going to place two single crochet into that same stitch. Go behind the loose yarn end to bury it. And then turn your work to work across the bottom. So I'm going to go into the next stitch along the bottom. Go behind the loose yarn end and then place two single crochet into that stitch. And then you're just going to resume one single crochet in every stitch. And every time you reach a corner you make two single crochet before and then two single crochet after. And then you can see how it kind of lays flat, which is what you want. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch around until you get back to where you started and then come back. So for mine, I have approximately 48 stitches in the round. If you're off by one or two, that's fine as long as you're close to what I have. And the reason why you'd be off is because of the um, evenly spacing of the single crochet along the side. So now go ahead and get a yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of three rounds. So you want to maintain your stitch count now. And just make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds, and then come back. After you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then you can finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the snout on the head. And then just cinch that knot down. So now, where we finished off, is should be towards the top. So the smaller area is on top and then the wider area is on the bottom of the snout. So once you have the right side facing you and the narrower or smaller edge of the snout facing up, we're going to place our nose. So go ahead and get whatever nose that you're using. I'm using my little heart nose. And you want to center it. And you want to center it so that you have three rounds free on top. So one, two, three. And also you want to make sure that you're centered. So here I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm right in the center. Once you're happy with where the nose is placed, 
then you're going to take your safety latch and just latch it from behind. Then we're going to embroider the mouth. So now just get your black colored yarn on the tapestry needle to embroider the mouth. And the first thing you're going to do is come up from the wrong side just beneath the center of the nose with your tapestry needle. And then just bring the black yarn through. Make sure you leave enough of the black yarn on back for tying a knot. Then you're going to go straight down. And I went down about three rows. And then you could take and tie a knot on the back. Then just take and make an upside down V. So I'm going to go over, again about three rows down and three stitches over. Oops, get that in there for you. And then just go right back into the center. And then you just need to repeat it on the opposite side. So you want to make sure that you're on the same level and about three stitches over. And then go back in where the center is. And then you just tie a knot on the back and then trim your loose yarn ends. So now you can set the snout, the snout aside and we're going to make the head. So now just choose whatever main color that you want and I'm using this light tan color and we're going to start with the magic circle. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize and wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle fingers. Go ahead and yarn over and bring up a loop and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Now we're going to play six single crochet into the magic circle. So you go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. And you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So here's two, three, four, five, and six. Then just take your forefinger and your thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing. Then let go and pull on the loose yarn end. Then you can turn your work because we're going to work in rounds. So you're going to go into the first stitch in the round and you're going to make two single crochet. Whoops. Drop my work. You're going to make two single crochet into that first stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have 12 total stitches in the round. So go ahead, finish making two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now we're going to continue with our increase rounds, which means we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. Go ahead and place your yarn marker right where you left off. And for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch. For those of you that know how to make the increase rounds, we're going in chronological order and we're going all the way up to one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So again, for this first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into one stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around. So now you should have 18 total stitches in the round. 
go ahead and move your yarn marker up, place it right where you left off, and then for this next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into two stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 24 total stitches in the round, and then move your yarn marker up, and for this next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 30 stitches in the round, and move your yarn marker up, and this next increase round is one single crochet into four stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. Now you should have a total of 36 stitches in the round, then just move the yarn marker up for the last increase round, and for the last increase round you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, and then repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into five stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. So now my work looks like this, and I have 42 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up, and now you're not going to be increasing the number of stitches in the round. You're going to maintain your stitch count of 42. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 11 rounds. So 11 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then come back. So now you should be finished with your 11 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. This is how my work looks. Go ahead and leave a little bit of a loop where you left off, and we're going to sew on the snout on the front. So the loop where you left off will go towards the back, and then we're going to sew the snout on the front. So go ahead and get your white colored yarn on your tapestry needle, and you're going to line up the snout so that the bottom portion is one round up from the bottom of the head. Make sure that the nose is facing straight. Then take your tapestry needle, go up from the wrong side of the head through the snout, and then just bring the yarn through, leave a loose yarn end, and then just sew the bottom only. So you only want to sew the bottom in place. and then just tie a knot. So go ahead, finish sewing only the bottom portion of the snout, and then come back. Now after you sew the bottom, just leave the long end that you left for sewing there, and then you have another one at the top where you left a long one. If you didn't leave a long loose yarn end, then just use the same colored yarn. Then you're just going to take and move the snout down, and you can see how I'm scrunching it because it has the Shih Tzu has a smushed face, so that's why I bring that down. Then you're going to count using the magic circle on top of the head as a landmark. Count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Under the tenth round, you're going to place the top of the snout. Then take the same colored yarn, and you want to make sure that the nose stays straight. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then you're just going to take, make sure that the nose is straight. You don't want it crooked like this or like that. So you just want it straight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then take and sew the top portion in place. So the top portion only. Then after you sew the top portion in place, just leave the long end for sewing for now. We're going to finish closing the head and then come back to finish the snout. 
So that's the only part that you've sewn, the bottom portion and the top portion. And now we're going to finish closing the head. And you want to leave the yarn for sewing. So I'm going to bring it back towards the right side. So I have my white yarn on the wrong side. Make sure that all of your white colored yarn is on the right side for when we sew it in place, the snout. And we'll come back to it to finish sewing down the snout. So for now, you're going to leave the snout as it is. And then you're going to return back to the back of the head. And for the decrease rounds that you're going to make, we're going to make the first decrease round. So go ahead and move the yarn marker up. And for the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. One single crochet into five stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. Now you can add craft stuffing, and then Continue to add craft stuffing as you close. So now for the next decrease round, go ahead and move the yarn marker up. And for this decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into four stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. So now, before we forget, we have to put the eyeball. So go ahead and take the craft stuffing out for now. Then you're going to take and get your safety doll eyes. And then you want to position the safety doll eyes on both sides of the nose. So use the nose as a landmark and place your safety doll eye where you want it. So there's one. And you want to make sure that they're lined up. So once I get them lined up, I'll come back and show you. This is how mine's lined up. And you can see that they're in line with the nose. And I have about one, two, three, four, five stitches between my safety doll eyes. Once you're happy with the placement, then you can take and place your safety latches. So I'm happy with the placement. Then you can take and return your craft stuffing and then we'll finish closing. And you can keep adding craft stuffing as you close. So then just take and move your yarn marker up and for the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. Then, this is how mine looks, then you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. Next, just make one single crochet into one stitch, and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then you can remove the yarn marker and then you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. So 
And I'll make one more single crochet two stitches together. Then I'm just going to slip stitch closed. So I'm just going to go right, skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a slip stitch. And then I'm just going to slip stitch around. And then once it's closed, just finish off, just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle, put the loose yarn in onto the tapestry needle where you finished off, go right in where you finished off, come out anywhere, and then just trim the loose yarn end. Now we can go back to the snout. So now with the snout, if you want to add craft stuffing, you can. I like to add just a little bit of craft stuffing for mine. So I'm just taking very little and placing it right into the side of the snout. Kind of spread it out in the snout. You want to make sure that your smile, or actually frown, is showing. Then you can take, and your side is going to fold over on itself slightly, and that's fine. That's what you want to happen. And then take your tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that you left, or the same colored yarn, just get the same colored yarn. Then you're going to finish sewing the side in place. So you want to sew the portion that lays on the head down and then the fold that you have you just fold you just sew right into that fold to make sure that the stuffing doesn't come out and then you can take and sew that fold down and then just take and tie a knot and then repeat the same thing for the other side and then for burying the loose yarn in go right into the snout and then that's what it looks like on the one side and then repeat the same thing on the other side and make sure that they are symmetrical that they look both the same on both sides as you sew it and this is what my snout looks like after I'm finished this is underneath Now you can set the head aside while we make the snout, I mean not the snout, the ears. Now for the ears we're going to start with the magic circle. So drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around the two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take and bring up a loop, yarn over and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then place six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we did before. Then we're going to close the magic circle. Then just turn your work. And then we're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around. Oops, sorry about that, flurry. So go into the first stitch and make two single crochet. And you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around, just like we've done before, until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and close the center of the magic circle by pulling on that loose yarn end on the back. And take a scrap of yarn or your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. We're going to be making two increase rounds in chronological order. So for the first increase round you make one single crochet into one stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern, one single crochet into one stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch, all the way around, back to the yarn marker. 
Then just move the yarn marker up when you're finished and then make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. One single crochet into two stitches, two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. So now you should have 24 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for nine rounds. So nine rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. So after you finish your nine rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch over. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ear in place. And you just need two of these. Go ahead and make two of them. So now you should have two of the ears and we're going to sew the ears in place on the dog. For mine, I made mine approximately two to three stitches away from the inner portion of the eye. And if you use the landmark, the magic circle as a landmark on top, just count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth. So just under the eighth round is where you're going to line up your ear. Then take the long end that you left for sewing, put it onto your tapestry needle or the same colored yarn, and then you're going to take and make sure you grab the both loops or stitches on the ear and then go into the head and then come out just to sew the ear in place. Make sure that you don't sew it on crooked and then you just go in and out making sure that you sew both edges of the ear to the body I mean the head, sorry. <laughs> and you're only going to sew along the top portion of the ear. The flap you're going to leave loose. So go ahead, sew both ears in place, and remember both ears have to be symmetrical or look the same on both sides. And make sure that you don't sew it on crooked. Now when you're finished sewing the ear in place, just take and tie a knot. I usually like to go through twice for the knot. Then take and bury your yarn, loose yarn end, into the ear. And then just trim it. And then just repeat the process for the other ear. This is what mine looks like after the ears are sewn on. This is what it looks like in the back and the other side. Now you can set the head aside while we make the body. The body is made the exact same way as the head except for the number of row, rounds. So we're going to start with the magic circle. Just take the yarn, drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to start with a six single crochet. First the slip knot then six single crochet into the magic circle just like we did for the head. Then just close the magic circle turn your work so that you make two single crochet into every stitch around. And when you have 12 stitches in the round, come back and then I'll show you what to do next. So now we're going to continue with increased rounds, meaning that we're going to increase the number of rounds, stitches in each round, and we're going to be making, just like the head, one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. But we're going to go in chronological order. So I'm going to get you started. Just take your loose yarn in, place it right where you left off, and then the first increase round is one single crochet into one stitch, 
and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. One single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. And then the next increase round is one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. So go ahead, finish making all of your increase rounds. The next one would be one in three and then two. Next would be one in four and then two. And then you're going to stop on one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then come back. So now you should have 42 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up place it right where you left off. Then just make one single crochet in every stitch around for 22 rounds. So 22 rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch. So you're not increasing the number of stitches in the round, you're maintaining the stitch count at 42 and then you're making one single crochet in every stitch around for 22 rounds. So this is how your work should look after finishing the 22 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Now you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and go ahead and place some craft stuffing into the body. And I want to start showing you how to close. And as you close the body, you can keep adding craft stuffing if you need to. So now I'm going to show you how to make the decrease round, which means you're going to be decreasing the number of stitches in the round. So go ahead and place your yarn marker right where you left off and then you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches. So there's two, three, four, five, and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decreased stitch. So go ahead, finish repeating this pattern, one single crochet into five stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around, back to your yarn marker. And you'll see that it's gradually getting smaller and smaller, smaller as we close. For the next decrease round, just move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So then you just keep decreasing in chronological order. You'll have one in four and then we started with one in five and then decrease stitch, one in four, one in three, one in two, and then one in one. And then when you get down to one single crochet and a single crochet two stitches together, come back and then I'll show you how to completely close. So you're going to go in chronological order, decreasing down to one single crochet in one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together. So now you can see that you're almost closed, just like we did for the head. So if you had any trouble, just go back to how we closed the head and follow along with that. Then remove the yarn marker, and now you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost completely closed, or you can't make any more because it's getting too small. You can see how I'm just single crocheting two stitches together. And then when I'm almost closed, make one more, then you could slip stitch close. So then you just skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And then you just slip stitch it closed. And then when you finish the last slip stitch, go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you just get your tapestry needle and place the loose yarn in onto the tapestry needle. You're going to go right in where you finished off and come out anywhere on the body. Pull that loose yarn in through and then just trim it. So now we're ready to sew the head onto the body. So I usually have the magic circle side for the right side and then the back of the body will be where we closed but it doesn't really matter because after we put all of the hair on it's going to look, you're not going to be able to see it anyway but that's just how I usually place the head onto the body now you may want to just keep yours without the hair because it's adorably cute so it's up to you 
Now what you're going to do is place the dog's head onto the body. So you can see how much I have hanging over the front here. And then once you're happy, you need to make sure that the nose stays in line with the magic circle on the front of the body. So as you as you sew the head in place, you want to make sure that that stays straight. You don't want the head going like this or like this unless you want it that way on purpose. So I usually like it looking straight ahead. And then once you're happy with the placement, you can take and start in the back. So you just take your tapestry needle, go into the bottom of the head and down into the body and then back out. You can reposition the head after you finish bringing the yarn through. And you want to make sure that you have enough of a loose yarn end. Reposition the head again. Then you're going to go back up into the head and then back over where you first went in. So you can tie a knot. Now as you sew, you want to make sure that you don't see your yarn showing through. Then just take and tie a knot. Then you can reposition the head. Make sure that the nose stays straight all the time. Then just take and sew. I went out of the head so I'm going to go back into the head and down into the body and out on the opposite side under the head. And don't worry if you skip stitches because you can sew around the head to the body several times. So we're going to be going around several times. And again, I'm constantly checking to make sure that my nose is straight. You can move the ears up if you need to. And then I came out of the body, so I'm going to go into the body about a stitch over and then go up into the head and out the head. So this is how you're going to sew the head in place. Just going in and out and then pulling the yarn through and making sure the nose is straight. So go ahead, finish sewing your head to the body and then come back. This is how mine looks after I'm finished sewing it in place. And you can see how the nose is midline with the magic circle in the front of the body. And it looks great. And I love how the ears will go out too with this. So this is a cute dog even without all of the hair. But um, I'm going to take pictures of it before and after. That's always fun for me to do. If you like this style of dog, you should check out my Bichon Frise. It has a separate YouTube video tutorial. And instead of hair, you have pom-poms. And that's a lot of fun, too, when you're making that dog. Now you can set your dog aside while we make the legs. So this is one of the legs that's finished. You can see it has a cute little paw, little tiny paw, and then the leg itself. So they're all made the same way. So you're going to be ending up making four of these total. So I'm going to show you how to make it. So the first thing we're going to do is take the main colored yarn, and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot, go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain, excuse me, then you're going to make a chain of six. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch we're going to place three single crochet into the same stitch. So here's my last stitch. I'm going to make three single crochet into the same stitch and as I'm working I'm going to turn my work and if you go if you run into your loose yarn end just go behind it and bury it as you crochet. 
So this is my third. And you see how I'm turning it? We're going to be working in rounds. So now we're on the opposite side. I'm going to go into the next stitch, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And you're going to make a single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're going to place three single crochet into the same stitch. There's one, two, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim my loose yarn end. Then I'm going to make my last single crochet into the same stitch, and you should have a stitch count of 13 after finishing that first round. Now just take your loose yarn in, place it right where you left off, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for one round. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch in the round. Then you're just going to take and turn the work inside out. Go ahead and place the loose yarn in right where you left off. And then you're going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and then five. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So then you just go into the next stitch, bring up the loop, go into the next stitch and bring up the loop, then yarn over and go through all three for a single crochet, two stitches together. Then just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches in the round. So now you should have 12 stitches in the round. This is what the work looks like so far. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet into five stitches again. So one single crochet into five stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So now you're going to single crochet two stitches together. Then you're just going to resume one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches in the round. So now you should have 11 total stitches in the round and you have your little paw portion, cute little foot. Then just take and move your yarn marker up and you have 11 stitches in the round. You're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. Then you can take and remove the yarn marker and then place some craft stuffing into the foot. Then after you put some craft stuffing into the foot, we're going to do an increase round or make an increase round. Go ahead and take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. And now you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then I have two stitches remaining in the round. I'm just going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So now you should have 13 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for 12 rounds. So 12 rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. So this is how your work should look after finishing the one single crochet into 12 stitches. Then you can remove the yarn marker and go ahead and add your craft stuffing to the inside. After you add the stuffing, then you're ready for your decrease round. Just like we've done for the head and the body, we're going to close it now. So for the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. 
and then single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I have two stitches remaining. Go ahead and make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. Then move up your yarn marker. And this time you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now I have one remaining stitch. Go ahead and remove your yarn marker and go ahead and end with a single crochet two stitches together. Then we're going to slip stitch closed. So you skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull the yarn through both loops, and you just keep slip stitching until it's closed. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Just grab your tapestry needle and just go right in where you finished off and come out anywhere. Then you're going to need four of these made the exact same way. So go ahead and make four of them total. So now after you have all four of your legs, we're going to attach them to the body. I like to use my Dritz Home upholstery needles. I think it makes it much easier. And normally for my larger dogs I use the 12 inch size, but since this dog is smaller, I'm going to use the 8 inch size. So I don't need quite as long of a needle. So this is like a tapestry needle on steroids. I love these. So I like to use these just to be careful with children because they are dangerous. They have this sharp, very sharp point and they're very long. So the first thing you want to do is just put a very long piece of yarn onto your upholstery needle and I, I like to go through twice, the legs twice and the body twice so I have a very long yarn end on here. So you want the same color as the main color for your dog. So you want two of them. Go ahead and grab one to start and remember you always want the little paw facing forward. So make sure that you have the paw facing forward and then at the top just go down a couple of rounds. So here's the first round, second. I'm going to go down to the third round and just go through and I'm going through the side of the paw. And then you go straight across to the opposite side and then bring the yarn through. And you want to leave a long loose yarn end here for tying a knot and bringing the leg close to the body, cinching them close to the body. Now you just want to line up. So you want to, usually I use the ear as a landmark right down the center of the ear and go down and that's about where I would want my leg. So kind of line it up, see if that's where you want to have your leg. And then once you're happy with the placement, you're just going to keep an eye on where the thread would go through the body. So it would be about right here. So I'm going to go over one more, because you're always going to go, you're going to have four different exit and entrances, about a stitch over. And then go over to the opposite side at the same level. So you want to be at the same level. And you also want to be midline on the body with the ear. So you can kind of gauge it. Make sure that you have it lined up properly. And then just bring the yarn through the body. And I like to leave about one to two inches of yarn. So here's about one to two inches of yarn between each leg and body. So then you can grab the other leg. And again, you want to make sure the little, pa the little paw is facing forward and then you're just going to go through the same way so about one, two, three rounds down and right in the side and then just go right through to the opposite side at the same level and bring the yarn through then you just want to go about a stitch over so I'm going to go stitch below and then go back through and you want to come out about a stitch over from where you went in. 
and then bring the yarn through. Then you're just going to go a stitch away. I went, I'm going in a stitch below where I exited the body and then I'm going to go through the body and you want to come out a stitch over from where you went in through the body. And again, just bring the yarn through and you want to make sure you have one to two inches of yarn. Make sure it doesn't get tangled. So I have two, one to two inches here. Now I'm going to go through the other leg. So again, about a stitch. I'm going to go a stitch below and then exit a stitch away from where I first went in. And then you're going to repeat this whole process one more time. And I love this process and I've used it for most of my crochet dogs and I haven't had one break on me yet. So now after you finished going through the legs and the body, this is how mine looks so far, now I'm going to pull on those two loose yarn ends to cinch the legs against the body. Now if you meet resistance, don't continue to pull, your yarn will snap. So just let go and then just pull on one yarn strand at a time. And then make sure that the yarn isn't looped in between. So you just kind of yank. And then make sure that your legs are positioned how you want them. So you can see that they're sturdy and they move up and down, which is what I want. So just keep pulling until you have where you want the, the legs to be positioned. Then you can take and tie a knot. And then I just trim the loose yarn ends. Make sure you leave enough to bury into your work. Then take your small tapestry needle or darning needle and then put the smaller loose yarn ends on them and then go in where you where you uh, tied a knot and then come out on the opposite side of the leg and then just trim the loose yarn end and repeat the same thing with all the loose yarn ends. Then you repeat the same process with the back legs. So again you have to remember that the paw should be facing forward and you also want the dimple from the front to line up with the dimple in the back for placement. This is what it looks like when I'm finished. You can see how they're even. Here's the other side. And then what's nice about, oh and also the paws are all facing forward, which is what you want. And then you can bend the leg so that the dog is sitting too. And it's a really cute dog even without all of the fur in place. So now, before I start showing you how to make the fur, I just want to show you how to make the tail. So for the tail, we're going to start with a magic circle. So you just use the main colored yarn, drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Hold in place your pinky and your thumb. Then just go under those two loops, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle, just like we've done before. Then you're just going to hold the base of the six single crochet and you have these two loops on the other side. You're going to pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. And then pull on that loose yarn end. Then just turn your work and you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around. So two single crochet in every stitch around. And when you have 12 stitches in the round, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So now just take one of your scraps of yarn, place it right where you left off, and you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one single crochet in every stitch around. For mine, I made one single crochet in every stitch around for 14 rounds. Now, after you're finished with your last round for what the length that you want for your tail, go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over, yarn over, and then just pull the yarn through both loops on the hook 
for a slip stitch. Then finish off, yarn over, and then pull enough yarn through to help sew the tail in place. So now you just take your tapestry needle or darning needle, put it on the long end that you left for sewing, and then you're just going to position the tail on the back and then sew it in place. And you're going to sew all around the base of the tail. So all around the base. Just going in and out and sewing the tail in place. Oh, hooked it on my leg. So that's all you do is just go in and out at the base of the tail and just sewing it in place. Now you can see that the tail will fold over so if you're putting hair on the tail it will make it look like the hair is waving for over the tail portion and the body. You'll see once we add the, the hair but if you like the, the dog the way he is you can also, this could be where you finish. He's really cute or she's really cute. So now for the fun part of decorating. So I just use, I'm going to start with the white colored yarn that goes right above the nose. So I put a little white yarn on my tapestry needle and then I'm going to go through the center of the nose first. So I just grab a stitch and then bring the yarn through and then leave the amount of yarn that you want to hang down. So this is about what mine almost touching the table. Then go ahead and tie a knot. Now you're going to loop the yarn. So you just go right to the stitch above. Just grab some of the stitch and then bring the yarn through. And you're just going to loop the yarn as many times as you can until you run out of yarn. And you want it the same length as your original. So try to make them the same length of a loop. And then you just keep going in and out, grabbing a stitch, and looping the yarn. So again, you want the loops to be about the same length. One more loop should do it. lengthen it so it's the same size. Then once you've looped all the yarn then you're going to take and grab one of the loops and then cut the loop into the center. Then take and tie a knot with whatever's closest and you can cut more loops if you need to. So here's a loop that's closer. I'm going to cut that one. And then I'm going to tie a knot. So you're going to keep looping and tying knots. So you can see that that would be a lot of work. So it will be a lot of work. And the more hair that you put, the better your dog looks. So if you have less hair, then it tends to make your dog look scraggly. So you don't want that, so you just find a good movie to watch on television and you just sit decorating your dog and it might take you a couple of days also. But I usually just grab a good movie and then 
just take and loop and decorate my dog the way that I want. So this is what it looks like so far. So that's not enough hair. I want to add more. So I kind of just move the hair over and then I'm going to go next to it. So I'm going to get some more white colored yarn on my tapestry needle. And then I'm just going to go right next to it. Adding more white colored yarn. And then I'm going to loop yarn all the way up on this side. So before I went right down the center, so now I'm going up this side. So now I have yarn on this side and some on this side. And don't worry if it's too long because you can trim and decorate it more later. So right now you're just kind of adding yarn and starting to create the facial fur. So now I'm going to move the yarn over on that side and do the same thing on this side. So now I'm happy with the amount of fur that's above the nose. Now I'm going to place the fur that goes under the chin so you can kind of turn your dog upside down and then you're going to put some fur loops along the very bottom and then also along right beneath the mouth. So you're just going to get some of your yarn on your tapestry needle. So now you have hair above the nose and then also under the chin and I made two layers under the chin, but you're also going to have a layer on the front of the body. So you're not going to be able to, it'll fill up nicely once you do that. Now I'm going to add hair right above the snout portion here, and I'm going to use the white color for most of it. For mine, I go into the Laro just above the snout, and then pull my loops through. You want the length to be long because you want to be able to flip it over on top of the head and make the cute little bow that goes on top of the head. So make sure that you leave it long enough. For mine is approximately, let's see, how many inches? So approximately 10 inches, 10 to 11 inches long. Some of the loops I made even longer, about 12 inches. This is what the first row looks like. So then you can move that down over the nose and then get some more white colored yarn. And then you're just going to go above. So a couple rows above and then loop the yarn 11 to 12 inches here as well. So now you can see how the hair looks a little thicker and you can keep adding the rounds as much as you need with the white but now I want to add some of the other fun color on this side on both sides of the eyes. And I'm making this length the same as I did for the white portion here so about 11 to 12 inches. And if you want to make it shorter you can always trim it later. It's always easier to trim it shorter than you can't make it longer, so I usually make it a little bit longer and that way I can trim the dog when I'm finished the length that I want. So now you can see how I add some color in and I'll be adding more white in there, but you can see how you could start to kind of push up the top so that you can tie a bow around it. See, but you're going to want more hair in there, make it really fluffy. For the ears, I started on the bottom with my white colored yarn. You see I put a lot of the white colored yarn. And then I just made it about, about four inches or so, four to five inches, and then looped. And like I said, you can always trim it later. So for me, it's easier to make it just a little bit longer than what I want and then trim it later the way that I want it. And then I would loop here and then here and then I start adding my blue colored yarn here or different colored yarn and then here and then up into the head. So now this is what they look like after I finished putting all the hair all around the body too. 
So underneath, you can see how I put some hair on the chest as well. And I mixed it with the white and the blue turquoise. And then on the back, I'm just going to show you, all across the back, I did the turquoise on top and then white underneath on both sides. And then the tail, I just put it so that it flopped over with all the hair. And then I also put some on the back side. And this brush will actually brush the hair. It doesn't tangle with the yarn. See how it has the little tips? And then it's separated, so this brush works well for brushing the hair.